Hey, Slashaholics. Tonight's episode of Slash Tracks is brought to you by 80stees.com. For both sport and some t-shirts from the site, I've got on Rowdy Roddy Piper's Hot Rod shirts. What do you got, and why are you wearing it? Well, in honor of Sylvester Stallone's 76th birthday today, Josh, I am wearing a Hawk mm-hmm. Pauling uh, t-shirt, which is an homage, uh, which is actually the company that Sylvester Stallone uh, drives for in Over the Top, the 1980s classic, where he's an arm wrestler, truck driver. And it doesn't hurt that it's one of the founder's picks uh, on the website at 80stees.com. Kevin, he does have chapstick, so at least uh, when he's doing the butt kissing, he won't get chap lips. I didn't um, pick but- <laughs> the shirt knowing Kevin had it as his pick. I just happened to, great minds think alike, Josh. I'm sorry that you went rogue on a shirt that's not even in stock anymore. Well, hey, I grabbed it before it was gone. Uh, they're always rotating stock there, so if you see something you like, do not procrastinate. Grab it today and use the promo code, Alex. Slash tracks 30, Josh. And that'll get you 30% off at checkout, so be sure to use that. Uh, you're going to find shirts there from your favorite TV shows. Favorite movies? Favorite cartoons? Favorite horror movies? And even video games. So much to so much to check out. You're going to find something you love. You're going to go to checkout. You're going to use Slash Tracks 30, get 30% off your purchase. Check out the animated intro, and we'll be right back after that with this week's news. Welcome to episode number 11 of Slash Tracks Action News. I'm Alex Vanover. And I'm Josh LaRue. Josh, good evening. And uh, I want to preface what I'm going to say right now. Uh, first of all, Hot Rod shirts looking great. Uh, 80s tees. Look at that bad boy. Uh, yeah. Also, Hawk Hauling. Wearing it for Sylvester Stallone's 76th birthday. But I want to get into the meat and potatoes of the night. Josh, what are you drinking right now? I am drinking Pepsi out of a coffee cup, but I brought this one on. I'm wearing a Nightmare on Elm Street hat and drinking out of a Jason Voorhees um, Welcome to Camp Crystal Lake coffee mug. Okay. So I'm kind of representing the slasher fans out there. Nice, dude. Uh, and, and true slasher, 80s slasher librarian style, man. So the the subscribers that you had to the channel before we started the podcast – and Slash Tracks, you know, the movie riff show itself, they approve. If you weren't staying true, you get a thumbs down big time on this episode, I bet, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because we dictate our entire lives what we do on people's comments, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's what I do with the channel. Yeah. I, not, not all the good comments, just like the one dickhead out of all of them. That's the one that uh, sets up the programming for the channel. Well, hey, I, well, that's good that you pay attention, that you have your thumb on the pulse of the <laughs> channel that much. Um, since we're talking about mean comments, let's just get get right into the first segment of the night. Let's talk about, you want to do mean comment, or do you want to do nice comment of the week? Uh, last week, we started with uh, mean, so we're going to have to do nice first tonight. All right, we got two nice comments. Okay, st- let's do the sandwich st- again. Nice, mean, nice. Okay, we'll do that. We'll do that. Okay. All right, first nice comment. Anus, toilet, semen, scream, Tim Curry, A+. And that is from <laughs> A to Z, Spore. 
awesome. Yeah, he liked <laughs> everything. Every topic we covered on the previous episode, he's just all in on it. So we're all in on his comment. That's a great comment. Where else can we hear about all those things together? Somebody's sitting on their couch at home, and they're like, "Man, I'd really like to hear a show that talks about anuses, Tim Curry, semen, the movie Scream." Just where could I get all those topics in one tidy place? Like a wall? We're the Walmart of podcasts. We do everything. We talk about exactly. everything. Yeah. Also, just like Walmart, we uh, can hook you up with discounts. Josh, what is the discount at Eighties Tees? that they can get, and what is the word they need to know to get that discount? It's right there in the pinned comment and the description, slash tracks 30, 30% off. Yeah, big ups to, to thank you, 80s Tees, for making our dreams come true by making us uh, have the magic ability to give discounts to the Slashaholics for great t-shirts. Uh, yes. Josh, we're going to go mean comment now. Okay. And I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, writing the episode this week, I was having a really hard time finding any mean comments, and that's pretty rare. Normally, we get a lot of them. Yeah, things are well, looking up. Yeah, things are looking up for the slash for the slashaholics and us in particular. We're not getting a lot of mean comments, so here's a mean comment. Okay, the world doesn't need more podcasts. This is in all caps with an extremely sad face emoji emoji at the end exclamation point, and that is from Salah. A two grada or whatever the hell his name is. Nobody cares. I think that's I think that stands for dickhead who posts mean comments. Yeah, um, you know what I have to say to Salee? Uh The world ne- <laughs> the world needs more new podcasts just as much as the world needs needs another troll. Uh, yeah. As if there's not enough trolls in the world, Salee. So why don't you do something new too, there, bud, and be nice for a change. But thanks for stopping in and taking yeah, the time to come. Thanks for watching. Hey, thanks for helping the algorithm, awesome. man. Come back and leave a mean comment at any any time because I even told my girlfriend last night when I was writing the rundown, I was like, thank God this guy was an asshole because I didn't have a mean comment at the time. I didn't. I was like, okay, bam, got it. Thanks a lot, dickhead. <laughs> um, let's go. Let's finish the sandwich. Let's finish the compliment sandwich. Let's go. Nice comment. Okay. Josh, this is big. We, are ha- we have our first ever two-time winner of Nice Comment of the Week Award. Mr. Prex Era is coming in hot. The doctor has prescribed us Prex Era once again. Uh, yeah, with all of his, <laughs> yeah, with all of his terrible side effects, dry mouth, pregnancy, constipation. Anal leakage. Anal leakage. Here comes Prex Era with a bag of 3D Doritos to save the day. He, so he, this is Prex uh, commenting on people being trolls to us about the narrate specifically about your narrations. Okay? okay. So that's kind of what he's talking about here. He says, if anything slash tracks and slash tracks news has gotten your channel more recognition. So that's good for your narrations. To be honest, it's going to help them to be discovered more as well. So it's a win win. Honestly, another great episode. And that's from Mr. Prex era, Mr. Two time comment of the week award winner. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Praxera. Oh, I'll take care of that later. Side effect. It's okay. Oh, uh, no. Thank, thank you for the comment. Thank you for the comment. Really Prex appreciate Era. it. Well, Praxera, all the publicity we're getting Praxera lately, because we're getting like thousands and thousands of views on these episodes. Uh, yeah. Episode 10 has like 51,000 views. Uh, or excuse me, episode 9 has like 51,000 views. Episode 10 is racing towards 40,000 views. Um. All this free publicity that Prex Air is getting, uh, <laughs> he's getting a life compliment sandwich, Josh, because people are like, man, Prex Air has got all these side effects. My dick's leaking. <laughs> I get my assholes sweating. Uh, can't poop. All this crap. Guess what? Prex Air, he's a good guy. Good time of the year, man. Pre- slashaholic, dude. And we're going to have to have an award for the, for the, you know, Slash Rex Action News Hero of the Year or something from the comments. Uh, like the like the best comment of the year, at the end of the year. Well, Pre- yeah, I think that's a great idea, and I think Prex Era. Like, if we had an employee of the month wall, you know, twelve months, I think the other people that are competing with Prex Era would be pissed because it would just be his face on March, <laughs> April, May, June, July, August. This guy's a real one, dude. This guy's down for the cause, dude. I'm down with this guy. He's, our, he's one of our number one fans. And Michael yeah. Clark, shout out to him. He's always got something nice to say. 
Oh, Mikey? Yeah. Yeah, He's Mike's... There with the song, slash tracks and everything, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mike is one of the... Mike is one of the guys that... Um, honestly, that if he ever wanted to... Um, be on any of the episodes or, like, talk to us, like, off off the channel, like, just as a friend, I'd talk to Mike. I like Mike. He's a two-time patron. He's got two patron pledges to us under two different accounts. So wow. he's a double fan. Really appreciate wow. that, Mike. Yeah, Mike, thank you so much, because um, those anything Patreon-related helps us to be able to put out more content and to be able to, like, have more time dedicated to the channel. Cause I mean, just like anybody else, we have jobs, we have families, uh, we have lives and it's tough sometimes to carve out, you know, a time in the day to, to do this stuff. So we appreciate it all. Right. Oh yeah. And yeah. there's a link in the description. If you want to support the channel, even like a dollar a month, it's, it's an option it goes all the way up to 50, uh, patreon.com forward slash 80 slash librarian. Um, unfortunately I can't change it. Um, but yeah, just go to that. And if you want to support the channel, that's, that's the best way to do it. Or use the promo code at 80 steescom Either way, you're really helping us out. And thanks for watching regardless. We know it's crazy out there right now. So. Yeah. But, um, you know what else is crazy? <laughs> fun facts. All right. What do we got? Uh, first fun fact of the night, Josh farting can help reduce high blood pressure and is good for your overall health. What is? Farting. Okay, we're back to anuses, uh, and that's uh, if you take Prexera, you're going to be doing plenty of that. So the side effects actually help you. Um, is that a real? Is that is that true? That re it's really healthy for you? Yes, farting. Do you think it's good to not fart? Have you ever felt like you had to fart and not been able to do and felt good about it? Like it like makes being your a teenager, like hell. being on a date, like in a movie, and you're like holding it in the whole time. That's bad for you. That's that's not something people should do. Probably not good for you. And also, if you're on a first date, Josh, with a girl you're attracted to, or a guy you're attracted to, probably not a good idea to be slamming popcorn during the entire <laughs> date because it's going to make you fart. That's why The Rock always said popcorn farts. Yeah. Yeah. And they're not friendly. Popcorn farts are stinky, Josh. So if you're trying <laughs> to impress a gal, maybe lay off the popcorn and stick to the junior mints, okay? I didn't mean me in particular, but you know, we well, you're speaking, you're speaking from experience. You've been there too, so don't even try to say you you haven't. I'm not saying when I used to go on first dates with girls, I was already nervous enough, man. I I was holding farts in anyway. <laughs> um, I feel sorry for I run every day, so I feel sorry for the people that happen to be behind me while I'm running around my block. Because whenever I, whenever you run, okay, <laughs> you fart because your stomach is getting shaken up. So whoever's running behind me, I God bless them. I feel bad for them. They're, if they ever, someone's going to catch up to me and beat me down. I think they're going to be like, "Dude, I've been tasting your farts for the last mile and a half, man. Like, get a new <laughs> running path. You're grossing me hey, out." Maybe you'll help them, uh, you know, get better, uh, get in better shape, run faster. They pat, they can uh, pass me if they want to stop taste, tasting and smelling my farts. Pass me. Get in better shape. Be a better runner than me. You got to be fault. prepared for when the when the nuclear grizzlies come. Oh, man, so. nuclear grizzlies. Uh, I have another type of species we're going to talk about later on in the show that they might rise up and fight the nuclear grizzlies. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. by the way, I have not cut my hair. It's still long. I just didn't feel like messing with it today. Yeah. I've been swimming. It's just tucked up underneath my hat, but it's still there. Okay. So well, now the don't fans worry. I know, I know people, were, people were concerned. And I wanted to set everybody's mind at ease. It's okay. still there. Good. So. All right. So Josh is drinking Pepsi. He still has his hair. Uh, Patreon. Uh, 80s Tees discount. Uh, people tasting farts. Anal linkage. We've covered a lot of real serious ground so far in this episode. Um, I, here's fun fact number two. Steven, okay. Steven Spielberg. Maybe you've heard of him. Uh, he <laughs> wanted to direct a James Bond film at one point, but was turned down by the studio. Now, after telling his friend George Lucas about it, George Lucas said he had a film uh, that was kind of like uh, James Bond films, but even better. Uh, and it was a story about an archaeologist named Indiana. And Spielberg ended up directing it, and, and uh, the rest is history. Indiana Jones. 
You know, I had a thought once that ties into what you're talking about here. It's amazing that that's how Steven Spielberg got attached. But, you know, Indiana Jones is a franchise that I feel like the name could pass to somebody else. You know what I mean? Kind of like uh, 007. Uh, I think it could work in that franchise. We got yeah. we got another Indiana Jones and in, like coming out soon, uh, so maybe after that one. I thought um, when Kingdom of the Crystal Skull came out that Shia LaBeouf was going to get the mantle from Indy, but that movie was such a like kind of a bomb, kind of a stinky turd. I loved it. People were pissed off that it had aliens, and then he's hiding in a. He's hiding in a fridge from a nuclear blast, Josh. Okay, Come on. he's always done, and and he really outran that boulder and didn't get hit by any of the blow thingies. I mean, come on, yeah, it's didn't. always been about. Yeah, but it, he would have if it was a. Anyways, just it's it's always been outlandish, and it's always been about mythical objects. Okay, the Ark of the Covenant and all that—that's an ideology. Like Christianity is an ideology. Believing in aliens is an ideology. So therefore, Christian artifacts are just as mystical and mythical as uh, aliens are. You know, it's just, it's, they're both sci-fi in a way. So I thought it fit right in with the franchise. Uh, yeah. Uh, breaking news. Josh just committed blasphemy comparing uh, <laughs> Christianity to aliens. Josh will be burning in hell with anal leakage after tonight's episode. This just I'm just hit. saying. <laughs> I'm what just saying, saying. Not everybody believes in Christianity. Is what I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. And not everybody believes in aliens. But if for the people that don't believe in Christianity and God and all that, uh, aliens and stuff are just as mythical as the Ark of the Covenant, you know, or the chalice and everything. So, well, Christianity and any faith really like. That's why it's called faith. There's, it's faith. You have to have faith because there's not a lot of evidence. Uh, it, isn't it called faith because it's like um, belief in things not seen? That's what faith is. Like I ask uh, Gary Busey, he'll he'll have a for each letter in faith. You know, he'll, he'll have, have an acronym. Uh, like words for each letter. You know, yeah, finding yeah. Uh, something something like. Uh, he's, he does that with every word. He'll sit there and like break the word down in uh, each letter, a word of what the word stands for. Yeah, yeah. So I, hey, so I met I met a lady yesterday, or excuse me, two days ago. It was uh, Monday uh, at the restaurant that I work at. Um, she was the lady who was in charge of casting Animal House and Stand by Me, and oh, she wow. na- yeah, she name dropped um, Gary Busey. That she was like good friends with Gary Busey. And I said, that's really interesting, because I, like, love Point Break. And she's like, oh, yeah, Gary this and Gary that. And I said, well, before I knew she was the casting agent, I said, well, how did you meet Gary? And she's like, oh, I casted blah, 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 and such and such. And I don't think she realized who she was talking to, because, like, Stand By Me is a top ten film of mine. I, like, love Stand By Me. So as soon as that lady steps foot in the restaurant again, I'm rolling out a red carpet, man, because she's, uh, you know, she cast one of my favorite movies of all time, man. The lard ass, the pie eating contest, uh, the Donnelly twins making fun of lard ass, uh, the mayor, like all these people, man. She, all the local- life is being pretentious. <laughs> uh, well, I don't want to have <laughs> Bob love- Wiley over for dinner. Faye. I don't I love the movie. That's one of the best movies ever made. What about Bob? Honestly. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. I was talking about the, uh, Stand By Me. But, They're so. both. They're both. And you know what else is a really good Richard Dreyfuss movie? Uh, American Graffiti, which, by the way, was made by George Lucas. I thought you were going to say Tin Man, the, sci- the uh, sci-fi series <laughs> no. of uh, about uh, the Wizard of Oz, but sci-fi spin on it. He was the wizard. He was, like, addicted to something on there. It was horrible. R- um, Richard Dreyfus recently, yeah. I think he just recently got a Twitter, and I, he twi- he tweeted the only reason he got a Twitter was to like help his son, like his son is doing something, and like he's only tweeting to like help his son. So it's like he posts some really funny tweets. By the way, Richard Dreyfus is he's like eighty. Richard Dreyfus is pretty old now, isn't he? Yeah, uh, Rocky Balboa is right there behind him catching up, though. Stallone, 76 years old and can still 76. kick almost anybody's ass. 
I saw some workout videos of him today on Instagram, and he's still looking nice and jacked. That HGH and testosterone and steroids that he's that cycle he's on right now working just fine. He looks great. That wasn't that wasn't a workout video. That was one of his early pornos that he did. But uh, the Italian Stallion is what they named sure it was it. a workout. Sure, he got a workout in the video. But okay, my final thought about Indiana Jones. I would have rolled my eyes if Part Four had been another Christian artifact to hunt, you know? At least they changed things up. And it was interdimensional beings, not aliens. Um, but I liked it. I, th- I thought it was just like all the others, and it was action-packed, and it was fun. I never went. I never watched an Indiana Jones movie to think. I'd go to watch it like I do a Transformers movie, to have fun and just, you know, escape escape reality for a while. So to see the refrigerator... You know, saving him from a fucking nuclear weapon, yeah. atomic bomb. I, I let that one go. <laughs> uh, as long as the, I feel like as long as in, when the new one comes out, as long as uh, you know Kylo Ren doesn't run in and like murder him halfway through the movie, mm-hmm. uh, I'll be I'll be okay with the new Indiana Jones. I'm curious what they're gonna do because I know Shia is not coming back. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, will we have a sidekick? Is it going to be Paul Rudd or Chris Pratt? Which, you know, it's going to be somebody, I'm short sure. Round, short Round could come back because that character, that actor uh, from the Goonies and from those Indiana Jones movies, he's made a huge career comeback with uh, that new movie, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, or whatever. It's like he plays like nine different versions of himself. It's like, a, it's like the number one rated movie that's came out in the last year. It's like going to be nominated for Academy Awards. Did you see that? I didn't know that. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. He made this. He he's made a huge, huge career renaissance comeback uh, with this huge film. I'm I'm sorry. I don't know the exact title of the movie, but um, he plays short. The kid who plays Short Round and who's also uh, in Goonies um, is in a huge movie, and he's like there's Oscar buzz. So if you guys uh, have any interest in that, uh, go ahead and hit that in the Google machine and check it out. Um, the Go Ogle. Go yeah, on, on. go hoggle. Josh, I was going to piggyback on what you said about uh, the Transformers before we go on to the next fun fact. Uh, okay. when, you, when you said Transformers, it's like I just thought about Michael Bay doing those movies. <laughs> and whenever he does a movie, he just likes explosions and stuff. It's like a well-known <laughs> thing. He's like a five-year-old in the backyard, and he's like, Bro, I got this car, and I got this thing, and I'm going to crash them together. And it's like, no, you can't shoot me. And I like go in the air, and I can go backwards <laughs> and forwards and pow. I loved his Ninja Turtle movies, man. I actually had fun with those, taking my kids to them. It wasn't – like, I feel like now if they do another TMNT, TMNT yeah. they should, like, do a continuation of the first two from, like, the 90s and pretend with that style. Yeah. yeah. I think that would be so cool with all the reboots happening and stuff. You do that kind of movie again like that because it was so gritty. The first one was so gritty. And the second one, they, they really dumbed it down. The third one, they extremely dumbed it down. Um, anyways, that would be cool. Sorry. The Michael Bay ones were cool. We got to see Krang and Bebop and Rocksteady on the big screen. Never got that in the old ones, so it was fun. But it was, it was like you were saying, like, bang, and Leonardo's gonna jump over this. It's, it's like a kid playing with toys. You're right. Um. I'm gonna say one last thing since you brought up Ninja Turtles, and I am a huge Ninja Turtle guy, okay? Yeah. I hated the Michael Bay Ninja Turtle movies, and I hated them because... I hated the way they looked. I hated their little backstory. They're basically invincible. Like, they're getting shot by bullets, and they're just bouncing off their shells. They're, like, sliding down, um, like, avalanches, like, on their shell. They're they're basically superheroes. What do you need to know to ninjutsu for when you can just, you're invincible? Read the book. That, he, Splinter read a book and learned it. Like, I didn't, yeah. like, I, okay. I, I enjoyed it because I remembered being a kid and enjoying our Ninja Turtles, you know? Yeah. And I was able to look over at my kids who were like five and seven at the time. And they, and and they liked it. it. Yeah, and seeing the joy and stuff. And then getting to see Bebop and Rocksteady when I took them to see the second one. It was more of a nostalgia trip for me because I always wanted to see them in a movie. Yeah. And like they were, they were getting that, and it was, it was fun because I was with them. If I, if I just watched it through my eyes, just, just me, yeah, I would have you know, scrutinized it a lot more. But I enjoyed it because it made me remember how much I enjoyed the original mm-hmm. God, well, man, well. yeah. I walked out of, uh, talking about the Harrison Ford thing, I was walking out of Star Star Wars uh, The Force Awakens when Kylo killed him. 
And this dude in the aisle's like, hey, hey, it's okay, man. Harrison Ford wanted to die. I was like, huh? He's like, yeah, it was, in, it was like in his contract. And like, I, I, I Googled it and like sat back down and finished the movie. Um, that was just a little fun fact. I almost walked out of that uh, when, when Harrison got killed, when uh, Han Solo got killed. Yeah. And uh, some guy, some nerd like me sitting in the movie talked me out of leaving. So, well, that's, that was, thanks. <laughs> that was, you know who that probably was? That was probably Prex era. Because oh, that's yeah, something yeah. he would do. That's something, some good thing he would do. He's so. like, it's okay. Harrison Ford wanted to die. He's all, yeah. listen, go ahead and Google it. My asshole's leaking right now, but I just wanted, before I went to the bathroom, <laughs> I, I, wanted to baby you know, I wanted to let you know Harrison Ford wanted to die. Um, Josh, did you know that military dogs are non-commissioned officers and are always one rank above their human handlers? Did you know that? No. Yeah. That's great. That's great. That is great. So that's probably and they're the good only, boys and good girls. Yeah, they're, that's probably the only time in the history of the world uh, that someone actually had to pick up their boss's crap off the ground. Like literally, <laughs> you think your job is bad, Josh? Can you imagine your your boss right now just taking a shit on the sidewalk and you you have to pick it up and throw it in the garbage can? That's <laughs> that's what these guys have to do for their. For their for their dogs because they're their boss technically they're above them. <laughs> It'd be really bad since I work for myself, but yeah, I know what you mean. That'd be horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take a big shit on the sidewalk here, and I'm gonna pick it up and put it in this green bag, and I'm gonna tie it <laughs> off and go on my way. If you don't have anal leakage that day, if it's a solid poop and you're picking it up, that's one thing. But if you have anal leakage and you're picking it up, that's a whole other problem. Um, because you ain't picking it up. <laughs> Josh, did, so these this next fun fact might <laughs> challenge the nuclear grizzlies, okay? Hey, Josh, did you know that bees on cocaine tend to exaggerate the quality of nectar and pollen that they find during the day? They exaggerate it? Yeah, they go back to the hive because they're just tripping <laughs> balls because they took a bunch of coke and snorted a bunch yeah. of bumps of coke, go back to the hive, they tell all their bee buddies, uh, hey, because they're high, uh, they're, they're cocaine bees. They're going to fight the nuclear grizzlies, these coked out bees. Uh, and the they bees. lie their asses off, their little bee asses off about how much nectar and pollen and stuff they found. <laughs> how do they lie? I don't know. Bees, I've, I've seen documentaries about how bees talk to each other. They like wiggle their ass like in the air and stuff. <laughs> so they wiggle so, a little, little differently. Yeah, they just wiggle it differently in the air because they're, I mean, I wonder if the other bees are like, man, that bee is partied out again. Like, that bee does not know how to maintain a proper buzz. It's like, or, or one name, Buzz. Buzz has got, Buzz, you got a problem. It's time for an intervention. <laughs> they're um, like, um, it's totally fine with get, catching a buzz every once in a <laughs> while, but you just take it way too far. Now you're just tripping balls. At least they're not pothead bees. They would just eat all the, you know, the honey they produce before we could harvest it. They, or just, just uh, the queen bee is just like trying to motivate them the entire time, but they're just stoned off their little bee asses, doing nothing, just, just lazy. Just a Hershey bar, and then they're like, "Oh, let's get to work. <laughs> um, give me some cocaine." Um, it's this is funny that scientists are. It's okay for scientists to get drugs, apparently, um, but if we go get some cocaine, we you know we get fucking arrested. It's ridiculous. That's what I took from this story right there. The fact that if you wanted to do some coke, that you're going to be arrested for it. Yeah, but if if I'm a scientist, it's like here, go get some to some fucking bees. <laughs> you know, <laughs> or you know that you know you know they got that idea while they were snorting coke in in the lab. You know, like dude, let's. What if we gave this to fucking bees? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how these bees harvest pollen if they're coked out of their little bee brains. Hey, Josh, the clitoris has between 8,000 and 15,000 nerve endings, while the penis has about 4,000 nerve endings. No, that sucks. That does suck. Um, I have one main question about this. If the clitoris mm -hmm. has between 8,000 and 15,000 nerve endings, but the penis has 4,000 nerve endings, 
how does the penis main achieve an orgasm 100%, but the clitoris only achieves an orgasm when the woman wants to pretend like she achieved an orgasm, which is, <laughs> uh, you know, if you actually knew the real number, it's like close to 14%. It's not good. <laughs> But they have that many, they have almost double the nerve endings. So how are they not having an that's, orgasm every time? Uh, that's That sounds like a you problem, man. I've never had that problem. What are you talking? I'm not talking, I don't have a clitoris, Josh. <laughs> no, I'm talking about, you're asking why they never, why sometimes, or why sometimes they don't. I was like, I never had that problem. Oh, um, I see. What, you're being an <laughs> asshole. You're being you're condescending. Being, yeah, you're being a heel. Being, you're being smug. No, that's, that's, you know, guys are at a disadvantage on faking it anyway, so. Um, yeah, it's like, uh, there's nothing, nothing there. Uh, <laughs> said you had an orgasm, but uh, nothing came out. I think you're lying. Uh, are you lying to me? That's where anal leakage would come in handy. If you did want to fake an orgasm, you could just, like, reach your hand around to your backside and then put some of that nice stuff there, and boom, you're in and out. But, still- the story just took a turn. Yeah, that could lead. Well, you're the one who's saying in the previous fun fact how much you want to do coke and how it sucks that you'll get arrested. No, I just said, isn't it weird that scientists can, can get away with, you know, buying, getting drugs, cocaine somehow? I mean, what, what do they do? Do they go to the fucking government and say, give me some of your government cocaine? You know, where the fuck do they get the coke? Well, in every police station in the world, I'm sure that there's confiscated drugs well, they, in the police locker. Let's right? just don't say we're scientists then, man. We could break bad. <laughs> it's just like on 21 Jump Street when Jonah Hill and Shannon Tatum are going to ho- throw a house party. And they they go to the police inventory confiscated items locker. <laughs> and J- Jonah Hill grabs a bunch of weed and he's like, yeah, we'll get them high. And then Shannon Tatum's like, yeah, get some of that beer and some liquor. And then um, Shannon Tatum grabs some Coke. And some heroin. And then Jonah Hill's like, put that shit back. We're trying to let them have a good time, not fucking ruin their lives. <laughs> <laughs> That's where they got it from, from the police from the police uh, lockout. Little slash um, likes don't do drugs. Yeah, don't do drugs. Um, also, we're going to get into the last fun fact of this segment. You ready? Mm-hmm. Okay. I didn't wink it, at the camera or anything. Alien hand syndrome is a condition... And when a person's limbs begin to act on their own without conscious control over their actions. So, like, hand Tourette's? I just, your hand starts doing stuff without you knowing about it. So, it's like, if I was ever arrested for grabbing somebody's ass or something, I'd just be like, oh, I have alien hand syndrome. I didn't, just... I didn't mean to grab that ass. Yeah. Or Idle Hands, Devin Sawa, he could have said he had alien hand syndrome. I love that movie. That's a great That's a movie. movie. Um, he got cast in Final Destination based on his performance in Idle Hands, by the way. Perfect. Yeah, he. Uh, I just listened to a documentary about that. Uh, they, The people who... Devin Sawa was the last person cast for Final Destination, and he was, and he's the star of the film, uh, but the people casting it weren't sold on him until Idle Hands came out, and they're like, oh, that's he did a really, really good job in a like kind of a horror movie. So, yeah, we'll, we'll cast him. I think whoever wrote that movie, Idle Hands, was stoned when they wrote the script, but it worked out for them, so it's okay. Oh, they were absolutely stoned. And, um, like, let's put a little bow on on fun facts with, like, with the Idle Hands thing and the Alien Hand Syndrome. Um, Alien Hand Syndrome sounds like something that Cartman made up on South Park (laughs) so he could get away with something stupid in an episode. That's what it sounds like to me. That's what it is. That's funny. Um, let's get into some sports. Let's get into good. Uh, let's get into. Uh, let's get into sports. <laughs> let's get into sports. There we go. <laughs> let's get into slash tracks action news sports. All right. <laughs> Joey Chestnut just won the Nathan's hot dog eating contest on the Fourth of July. He devoured sixteen hot dogs and buns. Uh, he even had to take down a protester who rushed the stage. So. <laughs> By the way, Joey Chestnut also had a cast on his leg. So he was competing in the contest uh, in a cast on crutches, wins the contest by eating 63 hot dogs and buns. A <laughs> protester in a Darth Vader mask comes on stage for his five seconds of fame to protest something. 
Joey, Te- Joey Chestnut takes a second, grabs the protester by his neck, tosses him down like a sack of potatoes, sack of shit, continues to eat more hot dogs, and wins his 15th Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Championship in a row. Joey Chestnut. He broke his leg training for the competition. Uh, don't ask how. Um, and the guy was, what was he protesting? Like, I don't even, I don't remember what he was, pro- I didn't even see what he was protesting. You're taking, you're taking competitions away from hamburgers. I mean, what the fuck was he? <laughs> well, they made the hot dogs out of uh, the sows that were saved in the previous episode. He was, he was uh, the fireman that saved the, pe- the pigs that made the hot dogs, so he was pissed he's, off. He's protesting the local... Uh, store all they had was a uh, mask no costumes they were sold out you know he wanted the full darth vader thing but uh all they had was the mask yeah he was actually he was actually dan Aykroyd from the great outdoors he's like do you know what hot dogs are made out of lips and assholes oh i guess that means i'm an asshole because i like hot dogs <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you ever seen the great outdoors oh dude that's one of my favorite movies of all time big bear big bear yeah yeah I've been struck by lightning 67 times in the head. Yeah, love it. Um, Okay, Josh, this this next sports story is the sports story. It's the gift that keeps on giving. Um, I doubt you've heard about this story because you don't like sports, but I'm going to – this is the crazy one, okay? Bobby Bonilla Day was last week. Bobby Bonilla was a player that played for the New York Mets. And (laughs) Bobby Bonilla just got his 12th installment of $1,193,248.20. Now, listen to this. The Mets have paid him $14,318,978.40 for him not to play. For him not to play. Oh, my God. The 2000 season, okay? So back in 2000, 22 years ago, the New York Mets were like, hey, we don't, wanna, we don't want you to play for us anymore. We're going to let you go play for anyone else you want. We're going to take the money we owe you. So it was like $30 million or whatever that was left on his contract. We're going to take that money and we're going to pay you in installments of like 30 or 40 years in the future. This never happened before, really. This was kind of unheard of. Bobby Bonilla was like, okay, I'll do that. You can take my my remaining contract and pay me whatever per year for the next 30 years. So Bobby Bonilla, most players get paid that year and they're done. He was pretty intelligent in doing this because this is better than any retirement you could ever have. So he has $15,512,221 left. So he has 13 more years worth of payments like this. All because they told him, the Mets told him they didn't want him to play for them anymore. He went and signed with the Cardinals like the next year, got a whole nother contract, and he's still being paid for like 30 years for the one year they owed him. Awesome. He, instead of taking the lump sum when he won the contest, he took the the payment plan. It's, I've never, it's, it's like unheard of. I've never, this is like the most incredible contract situation that ever happened. I'm sure the Mets are like, every time they write him a check, they're like, <laughs> God this damn. fucking guy again. Why? Why? It seriously. It's the gift that keeps on giving for Bobby Bo, and I think it's awesome. So I mean, the Mets are a billion dollar franchise. Fuck them. <laughs> they they did it to themselves. I don't care. Um, last sports story of the night, Josh. Now okay. this one, kind of crazy. Now Wilt Chamberlain. Have you ever heard of Wilt Chamberlain, yeah. basketball player? He was in movies. He was in Conan. Uh, He was a great basketball player in the 60s, the 50s, whatever, 70s. Uh, Wilt the Stilt, only player to score 100 points in one game. Okay. On March 18th, 1968, Wilt Chamberlain scored 53 points, grabbed 32 rebounds, had 14 assists, 24 blocks, and 11 steals. That is a quintuple double. A a triple double is... 10, 10, 10 in three categories. So 10 points, 10 rebounds, 10 assists. He got a quintuple double, okay? 11 blocks, uh, excuse me, 24 blocks and 11 steals. But he also had 53 points, 32 rebounds, 14 assists. I've never seen a stat line like that before. I've never heard of a stat line like that before. I play fantasy sports like crazy. He would be the most valuable, most important fantasy basketball player that ever lived on the planet. 
he's I've never heard of this before. Uh, it's ridiculous, Josh. If you average 20 points and 10 rebounds and five assists, you're one of the best players in the NBA today. Wow. Like, this is ridiculous. Just imagine the stats on the back of his tops card. Yeah, right. well, you couldn't even, like, probably write all of them on the back. He's just a legend, man. Um, it's pretty let's, cool. It is cool. It is cool. And I'm and he didn't get paid what Bobby Bonilla is getting paid to this dig. And Bobby Bonilla was like, okay. Will Chamberlain was Michael Jordan before Michael Jordan. Like, ridiculous. Um, let's get into Slash Tracks Wrestling. Uh, first off, before we do, speaking of wrestling... The Hot Rod shirt here, Rowdy Roddy Piper, and your Hot Calling shirt celebrating the 76th birthday of Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, you, can, birthday uh, you can get your favorite shirt, too, over at 80stees.com, and be sure to use the code, Alex? Slash tracks 30. To get 30% off your purchase. That's a big chunk of change taken off, so go find your favorite shirt. And they got other stuff, too, there. There's all kinds of amazing stuff on this website. Uh, from not just the 80s either. There's, it's from like every decade, uh, you know, in recent history and present. Check it out. You're going to find something you love, and you're going to get 30% off. Josh, uh, 24 years ago today, so 24 years ago today, uh, July 6th, when we're recording this episode, Goldberg defeated Hollywood Hogan on Nitro to win the WCW uh, world title. What are your thoughts of that? You remember that? Oh, yeah, I was watching that night. Um, I was a big... I used to piss everybody off. I was. I always went to the pay-per-views. That, uh, we, we went to a friend's house, um, a, a friend of my dad's. He got all the pay-per-views, WWF and WCW. And I was always a WCW fan more. We all were, kind of. Like, my dad loved Goldberg. He fucking loved Goldberg. And everybody else was, like, wearing Wolfpack. I always was wearing the NWO white and black shirt, you know, pissing everybody off, cheering for Team Hogan. And I was like, it's okay, Hogan's not going to put him over. And I was like, I was less stunned when it was over. I thought I thought the Goldberg streak was going to be broken or it was going to be a DQ win. I was like, holy shit, Hogan put over another wrestler, a younger one, gave him the belt, and didn't even get paid that good for it because it was a Nitro, not a pay-per-view. That was my reaction. Um, that was... I, couldn't believe, I couldn't believe it. I was proud of Hogan. <laughs> Um, that was one of those things where WCW, like at the time they did it to pop a rating on Nitro when they should have put it on a pay-per-view, obviously. Yeah. Um, so they screwed themselves. It was like a good news, bad news situation. Uh, had a really great rating, obviously destroyed raw that night, but screwed themselves in the long run because it was definitely a program they could have had on a pay-per-view. And also, um, I've kind of seen the backstory about that match. Um, Mm -hmm. Apparently, Hogan was supposed to get his win back, but (laughs) they never got around to it. Because Hogan's not Hogan wouldn't agree to stuff like that if he wasn't going to circle back and you know win the title back or or beat Goldberg. But I think WCW was like, "Yeah, Hogan, yeah, we'll put him over tonight, and then we'll we'll get back to you later on. You can (laughs) you can beat our unstoppable freaking babyface, you know, three or four years from now." Hey, on my know. birthday in 1999, the day after my birthday, my, my birthday was on a Sunday, is the night that uh, Nick Hogan was on Nitro, and when Hogan was getting dressed for the main event, Nick's like, why don't you wear this? And it was like it was like a yellow shirt or whatever, red shirt. Mm-hmm. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. And then he came out that night uh, in the red and yellow, teamed with Goldberg and Bret Hart, I think, to take on Mean Sting. Or no, Sting hadn't turned heel yet. It was Sting, Goldberg, and Hogan versus uh, some people. I can't remember. It was 99 WCW, so it wasn't complete shit yet. But yeah. It was, were, it was getting there. <laughs> were you there, or were you watching on TV? I was watching on TV. but it, Okay. Hogan was my childhood face hero, so... Mine too. It, I was. I think I turned in 99. I was born in 84, so I was like 10, 15, 14, like... I can't do the math. I was, I was like 15 or something. Anyways, he yeah. turned. It, it was fun. I turned 15 the night before, and it was, it was pretty cool to see Hogan come back to the good side. Um, that, was a, no. that, was, that was a huge deal. He had been a heel for like three years, three, four years at that point. And I was getting sick of him. I was tired of the air guitar. I was tired of him spray painting the freaking belt. I was tired of him dyeing <laughs> his fucking beard. 
I'd had enough of Hollywood Hogan. I needed the red and yellow back. I was sick yeah. of it. I was glad to see red and yellow back. And when American Made hit, it was awesome. And what's funny is if you go back and watch right before Hogan left WWF, I think it was King of the Ring, <clears throat> him and Jimmy Hart do this interview before Hogan goes out to fight Yokozuna, I think. It, it, it was sometime right before he left WWF. 93 versus yeah. Yoko. Yeah. Uh, it was right before he left. Um, Jimmy Hart was his manager going out. And Jimmy Hart gets on the microphone in WWF and says, he's got the red, white, and blue running through his veins. He was born and raised in the USA. And it's like, those were the lyrics to his WCW yeah. song. Yeah, Jimmy so, Hart wrote that song yeah, uh, I know. in WCW, it, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, he wrote it way before Hogan was in WCW. Because uh, he was like, I think he was writing it during that time. Because he was spewing, he spews the lyrics out in one of Hogan's last interviews on camera uh, before he left WWF in '93. I got to check that out, man. That's a, hey, that's a it's next level. Hogan put uh, talk, one last wrestling thing in the, about this story. <clears throat> I know we're kind of on a time crunch here, but uh, Roddy Piper was stubborn too about putting people over. And oh, uh, you don't say, you don't say. Okay. And he uh, he beat Hogan clean. You know, in WCW, uh, they it wasn't a title match. Everybody thought it was a title match uh, until the night of the pay-per-view. And it's like, the belt's not on the line. Uh, but, yeah, he put Hogan in a sleeper, and Hogan lost as a sleeper. So, I don't know, maybe Hogan wasn't dick all the time, you know? Well, as long as the belt wasn't changing hands, I'm sure. And I'm sure Hogan's like, ah, it's fine, brother. Like, I'll just drink yeah, some Miller you, Lite backstage. I don't care. If I ever got that famous in wrestling... I think I would be just as selfish because you know you got you got to get it get while the getting's good. You got to look out for yourself because nobody else is going to do it. So All I right. kind of get Hogan and I kind of get Piper. You got to protect yourself, you know. When you All right. This. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because I'm going right into a story that's also about Hulk Hogan protecting <laughs> himself. Okay. So 17 years ago, yesterday, mm -hmm. the Heartbreak Kid Shawn Michaels turned heel on Hulk Hogan by super kicking him in the middle of the ring, which led to their match at SummerSlam. <laughs> where Hulk Hogan went over HBK because uh, it was supposed to be, it was supposed to be a best of three. Mm -hmm. uh, Hogan was supposed to go over first, then HBK, then they'd have a rubber match. Well, after Hogan <laughs> went over HBK at SummerSlam, uh, they were going to have their rematch and Hogan said, nah, brother, I think I'm done with that storyline. Uh, wait, 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 I think HBK got wind of that before the match happened, that Hogan was going to pull that shit. Because the story, the story was supposed, I think, goes like, uh, Hogan said that after he beat him, you know, I'm done, you know, I'm not going to do it. Uh, I think that he was talking to somebody backstage before the show, and HBK caught wind of that, and that's the whole reason that Shawn Michaels went out there that night and sold it sold every move like Hogan was Superman. Yeah, he like over he, the, he was ping-ponging yeah. himself around the <laughs> ring like crazy. He was jumping all over the place. He was, like, every move was just devastating. Like, he was fighting Clark Kent, you know, in the ring. Um, that's that's awesome. I'm, I'm glad you brought that story up. Um, people, if you, if you get a chance, check that match out. Um, I know that Hogan didn't say anything until after the match about not continuing the series. But, like, there's some rumor that HBK caught wind of it. And that's why he sold like that, because he knew Hogan was going to pull that. Um, what do you think of that? You think HBK, Hogan, Hogan on that one? Uh, I think HBK... I, I think HBK was well-known for being... Uh, going into business for himself, and I think Hogan was well-known for going into business for himself... <laughs> And I think those two together in the same ring was destined to have an outcome that was not going to be favorable. And Hogan, Hogan just got lucky because he was the, the first one to be put over. And that was it. Hey, uh, I, I, I like that HBK oversold, though. Hogan got his way, but HBK got to prank him on the way out. You know, I wish we could have got a Bret Hart Hogan match back in the 90s, the early 90s, or a Hogan and Flair match when Flair was there. <clears throat> that never made any sense. They tested that at house shows. And we got Sid versus Hogan at WrestleMania that year instead. Um, I don't know why we didn't get Flair and Hogan in WWF. That's weird. 
I don't know why they didn't do that either. That was a total, total missed opportunity. Um, I think it was the match that everybody knew was going to happen because it would have been the real world's champion versus the world's champion. But at the time, Ma- Macho won the title at WrestleMania 8. Hogan didn't even have the belt because Flair won the Royal Rumble that year. Yeah. And they were going to have Hogan fight Flair at the Mania after that. And instead, they said at the Sid, they, they, they tried Flair and Hogan at house shows. And they said that it just wasn't going over. I, I think it was just Hogan and Flair and Egos, you know, at the time. And they, that's when they did the whole Sid Vicious thing at the Royal Rumble. Yeah. Well, and, Hogan, uh, Hogan got his ass booed off at that Royal Rumble, by the way. They edited out the boos, but at the at the 92 Royal Rumble, Hogan got his ass booed out of the building because by that point, people were sick of Hulk Hogan. He had won the previous He had won the previous two Royal Rumbles, okay? And then at 92, when he gets eliminated, he pulls Sid out. So Sid didn't even really get eliminated. Hogan eliminated him. Hogan was already eliminated. And then Hogan was like doing heel moves. He was biting people. He was like raking their eyes and stuff. Hogan he was, was doing, yeah, he was doing heel shit. Um, kind of interesting. Uh, speaking, uh, let's get into one more wrestling story and and another wrestler who would go into business for himself quite frequently. Who do we got? We got the Ultimate Warrior. Uh, <laughs> were you aware that the Ultimate Warrior almost signed again with the WWF in 1997? A year after beating Triple H and leaving? No, he, I didn't know that. Yeah, so apparently uh, the WWF at the time, which is WWE now, caught wind that Ultimate Warrior was negotiating with Eric Bischoff and Hulk uh-huh. Hogan to come back. So Vince McMahon's like, Pritchard, Cornette, get, God damn it, get Jim Helwig on the phone. I got to offer him <laughs> something right now, pal. So they faxed him over a contract offer. And by the way, the only reason I know about this is because it leaked. So it like leaked in the last month, this contract mm-hmm. offer. Yeah. Um, Apparently, this is what they offered him, uh, $750,000 a year on the downside, guarantee. So $750,000 a year, guaranteed on the downside, a net 35% on all of his merch, which most wrestlers only got 28%. Yeah. And then this is the one, and you as a wrestler are going to appreciate this one, a max of 14 days on the road out of the month. So... Oh. Back in those days, 97, they were doing house shows like every night. They'd have literally like two or three days off. So the $750,000 a year and the merch stuff, that's what Undertaker and Shawn Michaels were getting. So yeah. he's br- he's bringing Ultimate Warrior back in, top guy, immediately paying him exactly the same as the two top guys in the company. Uh, and he's going to give him 7% more on the merch and far, far less days on the road. And for some reason, the Ultimate Warrior turned that down. I, and I, they must have paid him so much money in WCW for him to turn that deal down in WWF. I mean, so much money. And I'm sure Vince was like, you can even wear stupid hats out to the ring, you know, and, and smoke a cigar like like he did in his last run in 96. When he wrestled Goldust and he was yeah, wearing he his Ultimate wearing Warrior hat. hat. And... Uh, no, it was, it was to protect his head from whenever they broke the mirror over his head or the picture, or whatever it was. He wore the hat because he didn't want to go out there and have his hair or his head hurt uh, by the prop. That's why he wore the hat, everybody. He was he was the ultimate pussy at the time. Don't you think that that would hurt his head more because the button on top <laughs> know, of the hat right? would dig into your skull once you get hit by something? That seems ridiculous. You would think so, but that, that was his excuse. Um, but yeah, uh, Warrior's gone. I'm not going to talk shit. You know, he, he made his amends on his way out and uh, got a lot of respect for him for that. But I, there's some things he did, some like uh, motivational talk things he did that were very, very bad. If you if you if you, if you want to keep a positive view on the Ultimate Warrior, do not Google his talks that he did in like colleges and stuff. You don't want to know. Um, he, cir- he circled back and. And made amends for all that stuff, though. He did. He did. He did. He, he's a human being. He made a mistake. We've all made mistakes. I personally really, really like the Ultimate Warrior, and I'm, and I know you. I know you respect him as a wrestler, but yeah, he did do a lot of stupid things. Who hasn't? Exactly. Um, yeah. but, but it's good that it, it's good down. that he made amends at the end there. I, but you know, it's just it's too bad that he had to 
say those things so openly uh, in public and to also be recorded. I mean, it, it's it. It's you know, it's just a shame that he had to. It was just something that didn't need to be said. Yeah. Like he yeah. could have just kept those thoughts to himself and never. I don't know. It was just didn't need to be said. Yeah, um, but uh, he he was always fun as a kid. I didn't know about politics and wrestling, or that he was a bad wrestler. I didn't know yeah. any of that, um, or that he was blown up before he got inside the ring to start the match. Um, yeah. Hey, I do, I understand and all that stuff, but it, it's like, what the hell was the Ultimate Warrior's character supposed to do? He runs to the <laughs> ring. He's frenetic. He's a ball of energy. He's supposed to be super powerful. He gets his power from the cosmos and from the sky. He's not going to go out there and have a technical freaking 20-minute Broadway match. He's not doing an Iron Man match. It would make no sense if he was putting on figure four leg locks and drop toe holds and stuff. I don't like when... Go ahead. I don't like when people say that. It makes It's like, what do you want him to do? It's, it's his character. It's a business. That's what his character did. It's ridiculous that when they say that. I think it's because he didn't have a respect for the business at the time. You know, he won't, you know, he didn't, he didn't do the, like even on whenever he was doing the indie circuit, you know, working the different uh, regions and stuff, he was like kind of a prima donna. But um, that's kind of like what I was saying about Hogan earlier. You gotta, you gotta look out for yourself because nobody else is going to yeah. do it. Yeah. He, so. and hey, Jim Hellwig. I think they were jealous because he had star power and they didn't. The wo- so. The warrior, I will say one thing about that man charisma like whatever it is that people have that draw you draw other people to them he had it in buckets oh, like yeah yeah that man had it he had star written all over him and he also i've heard stories of him and sting on the road eating you know eating cans of tuna like having no money for any food eating produce in the grocery store not paying for it like doing whatever they could you know, driving old taxi cabs that had like 500,000 miles on them. They bought them for like 40 bucks, breaking down in one town, buying another old taxi cab, driving to the next town. It was um, fun to see them tagging, and they tagged one night in WCW. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was so cool to see that for people that knew uh, about their their history. Yeah, you know? definitely. So. Um, Josh, let's get into uh, horror and spooky news. All right. And right. speaking of horror and spooky news, 80stees.com slash Rex30 gets you 30% off. Check out all their horror and slasher shirts. You're going to love them. Horror and spooky news. So, oh, yeah. hey, man, uh, Stranger Things strikes again. So, Kate Bush hit number one on the iTunes when Running Up the Hill uh, hit number one, you know, yeah. a month ago, whatever. First, it was like number 30 at its peak in the 80s, and then it hit number one. Uh, because of Stranger Things, because that huge scene where Max is floating and she's fighting Vecna. All right, Stranger Things has done it again. Uh, Metallica's Master of Puppets, the 1986 hit, is now number one on the iTunes rock chart after it was used in Stranger Things' latest episode uh, of Netflix's show where Eddie Munson has a guitar solo in the Upside Down Against all of the Demogorgon Gorgons. <laughs> Spoiler alert! It's it's Sorry. on. It's on. Been, we we started to rewatch the show from the beginning recently, so we're gonna yeah. like watch it all the way through. Well, uh, it's in, yeah, it's, it's in the awesome. trailer. I think it's in the trailer. Yeah, it's I, not like a spoiler. I think in season one. Yeah, I know. I'm just goofing with you. I think in season one, should I stay or should I go? Uh, jump the charts too for the first time since the '80s or whatever '70s. Um, I have to look into that, but I'm pretty sure I remember reading that. I think Stranger Things has like had a way of like bringing back old songs. You know, everybody wants to download them, and and I don't know one person that downloads music honestly. So how do they? Do you do you know people that download songs? I don't. Like well, I, some people <laughs> people that have money, people that actually have money that can afford iTunes probably do it. But I just look at uh, YouTube because uh, I'm broke, so mm. that's how I do it. Um. That's why 80stees.com with a 30% off slash tracks 30 is so helpful to me, Josh. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So that's great. Um, no, I don't I don't go to iTunes and download music and pay for it. No, I don't. But that's cool that people are doing it. That's that's cool yeah. that people can afford it to do that. That's great. And you know what? A band it's cool a strength of things is bringing it back. Hey, Josh, it's good that a struggling band, you know, like Metallica is finally catching a break after all these years. It's- 
You know? know, you know, especially after all that Napster stuff took all the yeah. money back. It's nice to see Metallica getting paid again. You know, they've been struggling for decades because of Napster. It's nice to see things come full circle for Lars and the boys. Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah, I'm proud of them. Um, Josh, second spooky story of the night. It is 99 days officially until Hall- Halloween Ends is released. Oh, wow. I need to hurry up and watch Halloween Kills. I need to watch Halloween Kills. That's my thoughts. Um, you haven't, you're the 80s slasher librarian. You have a library I, of slasher things, and you uh, haven't seen Halloween Kills. I, wanted to, I want to watch Halloween Kills and Halloween Ends back-to-back for the first time. That's my goal. Okay, I'm not going to ruin anything for you. I'm not going to give you any spoilers, okay? Halloween 2018, have you seen that? Yes, yes. Okay, yes. it's good. Then I like I, it a lot. Okay, Halloween 2018 is a, a good movie. Halloween Kills um, is not a good movie. It's not good. <laughs> I didn't like it. Um, I wish they kept them siblings. That's my thing. But. And, hey, I hope you enjoy that. It's going to be great. You're going to love it. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to make a lot of sense. Uh, it's not going to be all over the place and, and, and random and have weird quotes in it that they repeat throughout the whole film. You're going to love it. Halloween Kills is okay. great. <laughs> yeah, if you like Scream Five as much as you did, your four out of ten rating or whatever you gave it, you're no, gonna like five point five. Okay. you're gonna five or so. you're gonna adore Halloween Kills. You're gonna love it. Hey, um, July third, Josh. July third was Return of the Living Dead Day because uh, in the opening scene when they're at the medical warehouse, July third, nineteen eighty four, five thirty p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, that that was the day. That was when Freddy and uh, they were in there, and they were going to see the the barrel of trioxon with the tar man. Yeah, uh, July third. Did you celebrate? And if you did, what did you do? I just uh, emptied out the clown barrel and climbed in, and no, I, I didn't know that was the thing, man. I didn't did, know. Did the clown have trioxin in the, in the barrel? Uh, I'm pretty sure that's what that shit was. It was either that or clown shit. So oh my god, a radioactive zombie rodeo clown <laughs> versus uh versus a nuclear grizzly versus a cocaine bee and murder hornets will throw them wow. in there. murder hornets yeah murder hornets were a thing man i haven't seen one but if i do on i'll know huh on cocaine murder hornets on cocaine that would be you know there's a guy on youtube that goes around the world to get stung by every stinging thing, and like there's a murder hornet episode and stuff that's even worse. Like he purposely gets stung by them. What happened? Like, oh, yeah, this is pretty bad. I'm gonna what? probably pass out. <laughs> what happened to the murder hornet thing when he got stung? It, I think that's the one that made him pass out or something. Like he, like it swelled up and it was crazy. It was crazy. He well, found murder- something worse than murder hornets. I can't remember what it's called. You have to look it up. But uh, yeah, yeah, murder hornets. Uh, well, you know, I'm. <laughs> I'm less afraid of the murder hornets themselves and more afraid of the person who actually named the murder hornets. Right. I think they're just trying to fuck with everybody. Yeah, just psychologically fuck with everybody. It's like, killer. if you thought killer bees were bad, wait till you meet the murder hornets. Hornet. <laughs> Josh, let's get, into, uh, let's get into the last segment of the night, man. Let's get into headlines. Headlines. All right. Um, headlines. Netflix is planning to hire everyday binge watchers to watch and rate their new original content. These binge watchers could get paid upwards of three thousand dollars per month. Wow, sign yeah. me up! But my conditions are: you got to let Glow have a final season, like you promised them, and we need a two-hour movie to tie up uh, Santa Clarita Diet. Then I might help. I might help. You know, so. Yeah, Netflix has a really bad habit of like getting people into shows of like of their original content and then just pulling the rug right out from underneath them. Yeah, they promised Glow a final season, and then because of coronavirus, like, nah, you're canceled. You know, and like they were the show was really good. Anybody that has loved, Glow, watch. Glow. I love Glow. Yeah. If if you want to, since it sucks that it ends the way it does, and they don't get a final season, or you know, they could have gave them a movie. Um, it pretty much ends where the real glow production begins if you want to see it that way they're going to have to use different names they're about to start their tv show which you can go to youtube and the entire catalog of glow from the 80s is on youtube uh so i i just look at the tv show as kind of a prequel 
to what you can go watch on YouTube. Just look at it that way, and you'll enjoy it better. Uh, it won't be such an open-ended ending. Um, there's a lot of creative liberties taken, um, but the first three seasons, the names don't match up to what was in the real glow. But at the end of season three in the finale, they're saying they don't own the names they've been using, so they're going to have to get new ones. And mm -hmm. I think the final season was going to have, you know, actually have the names from the 80s. And it was going to be their 100 episode thing. Uh, it was going to tell that story of the original glow. So, yeah, that, that's a way to enjoy that. Santa Clarita Diet, I don't know what to tell you. That one ends on a big cliffhanger, and that pissed me off. But uh, if you want to make $3,000, apply to be a binge watcher. Well, I don't know. I don't even know why we're still recording right now. Why aren't we on the Netflix website right now filling out applications? We are wasting our time right now. I'm doing it while we're talking. Oh, yeah. you wise men make wise decisions, man. You are you're on the ball, buddy. Did you know that Mickey Mouse could soon leave Disney, Josh, uh, as the 95 year copyright expiry date is nearing? Oh, wow. I haven't even seen anything with Mickey, like a new Mickey thing in like in 10 years, honestly. So to me, oh, he's already left. <laughs> I got an offer here. Uh, I might sign with uh, uh, Warner Brothers. Uh, I might sign with uh, WWE. Uh, 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 uh. Or Netflix for $3,000. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go binge watch. Oh, oh. oh um, shit. Some cocaine. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, cocaine. Cocaine mouse. <laughs> um, if Disney's not losing Mickey Mouse, okay. Um, but it'll be a hell of a fight. It'll be interesting <laughs> to see who tries to claim it. I mean, I don't even know how that works, but... I'm sure they have, a, like, a huge legal team already working on this so they can retain Mickey. Because that's like McDonald's losing Ronald McDonald or something. You, that's not going to that happen. really happened, though. <laughs> they lost Ronald McDonald? He's gone. He's been gone for years. Oh, they, uh, got rid, they got rid of him. They didn't get rid of him because they lost the copyright. Right? They, they, oh. stopped, they stopped using him because they didn't want to make it look like they wanted to target children. Like, with the Play Place and Grimace and Birdie and stuff. Because everybody, because nobody sleeps anymore, right? Everybody's awake, isn't or whatever. So I think I have a couple things to say about the the McDonald's blaming McDonald's for people being overweight. First of all, I think it's ridiculous that you would blame a, uh, like a fast food restaurant for your own issues with not being able to say no. Number one, okay, and number two, um, the movie supersized me. While he did gain a ton of weight from eating McDonald's three times a day. Nobody eats McDonald's three times a day. Exactly. I'm sorry. You're going to have breakfast or eggs or something in the morning, and you're going to have a normal dinner. You might have a big McDonald's for lunch or dinner, but you're not. I mean, when, when I was in high school, I might have went to Taco Bell for lunch and McDonald's for dinner, but I didn't have it for breakfast, too, and yeah. I was active that day. I was exercising yeah. and stuff. Exactly. It, it, was, it was pretentious. I like the guy's documentary sometimes and the stuff, he, like his show 30 Days or whatever. Yeah. But um, I did not... I miss my supersized fries, man. I miss my supersized fries. And I miss, I actually miss McDonald's uh, quarter pounder meat being not fresh, you know, being frozen. Uh, they switched to fresh like four or five years ago. And it just tastes like Wendy's now. So it's like, eh. But, they swapped. Another thing they did at McDonald's that pissed me off is they used to use beef tallow to fry the fries, like actual beef tallow. Yeah. Now they use vegetable oil or whatever. But like, I the fries are still good, but it's. 80s and 90s McDonald's, if you ever had the ability to construct a flux capacitor and go back in time with a DeLorean, go back to 1980s McDonald's and thank Alex and Josh that you that we gave you the idea because it was try the nuggets. elite. Yeah, try the McNuggets, get a McBLT or a McDLT before they got rid of the styrofoam box, uh, Arch Deluxe, uh, the, the original McChicken before they replaced it with the bullshit they got now, the old McChicken fried in beef tallow. Ooh, and hit KFC and get, mayonnaise. Hit a KFC and get a 1980s Chicken Little. Those were fucking amazing. Yeah, they... Uh, listen, all this healthy bullshit, it's like, listen, don't eat more calories uh, than you burn, okay? Exercise, you know, for 30 to 45 minutes every day. And make smarter decisions, and you're not going to be overweight. Don't blame other people for your bullshit, okay? Because exactly. I, used, I used to weigh 358 pounds. So I don't know if any, any slashaholics are aware of that. I used to weigh 358 pounds. I'm 204 pounds now. I exercise every day for one hour, and I watch what I eat six days a week. On Sunday, I, I'm cheat day. I eat whatever I want. 
You can go do watch, it too. Yeah, go watch Slash Tracks episode. What was it? Six. Yeah, I'm and then fat. Come back and come back and and look now. That's yeah. what that's what dedication and perseverance can do for you. Yeah. And, so uh, hey, then you can blame yourself for being a success. Yeah, not blaming somebody else for you being something you don't want to be. Yeah, so. take ownership of your own life. Try, stop trying to blame other people for your own crap. Um, so Josh, here's here's another story. A UK wildlife sanctuary has been forced to separate five uh, five birds. Okay, five parrots because the parrots were encouraging each other to cuss at the public. So this <laughs> so this UK wildlife sanctuary had to separate Billy, Eric, Tyson, Jade, and Annalise because they were encouraging each other to swear at the customers. Oh, this just in. Uh, it was not actually the birds that encouraged each other. Apparently, this story was reported to us from some bees on cocaine, and they have exaggerated the story. Um, that's what happened. No, that's funny shit, man. I like that. Um, I don't even have much to add to that story. That's 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 great. I don't understand. <laughs> I love Why would they? <laughs> Dude, don't they want to make money? What, well, don't you think they'd make more money by leaving the birds uh, on display yeah. that are encouraging each other to cuss at the cu- like? People would love to see that. I'll buy process. a ticket right now. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. We got to get our Netflix money first. We got to get our binge watching money because we can't afford a ticket. But if we could, we'd go do that. Josh, if we could, if we did have a lot of money, uh, uh, where would we go to find the nicest shirts in town? And it, actually, we don't need a lot of money, just a little bit of money. Yeah, just a little bit because we have uh, slash tracks 30, the promo code to use at checkout at 80stees.com. Yeah, baby. Don't need a lot of money when you got a, when you got a 30% off discount like that. Uh, Josh, uh, one of my stories, we already covered it earlier. Uh, today is Sylvester Stallone's 76th birthday, so that's why I'm wearing the Hawk Hauling over the top shirt. Mm-hmm. Um, just want to touch on Sylvester Stallone really quick before we get into the last, last story of the episode. Uh, Sylvester Stallone has played a huge part in my life. I remember being a little kid whenever the the United Artists logo would come on any film. If it, if it wasn't a Rocky movie, it could yeah. be United, United Artists. I immediately thought it was a Rocky movie and wanted it to be a Rocky movie. So I'm like three or four wanting every United Artists film to be a Rocky movie. Yeah. Um, he was in all the Rambo movies, obviously. He wrote most of them, starred in all of them, uh, wrote, directed, starred, produced all the freaking Rocky Rambos. Uh, he was in Judge Dredd. He was in Cliffhanger. He was in uh, Stop or My Mom Will Shoot. He was in, I mean, so many, 50, 60, 70 movies that I love. Uh, he was in Copland. He gained a bunch of weight. He went full method to get that role. Uh, to be in a, uh, to be taken seriously with Robert De Niro and Ray Liotta and all these, uh, you know, Harvey Keitel. Um, Stallone's a really, really nice guy in real life. He's funny. He's an artist. He's affable. Uh, happy birthday to, to a man who made my childhood and my life very, very fun and a heck of a lot more entertaining. Happy birthday to Sly, a hell of a guy. Yeah, happy birthday, Stallone. And also, hey, by the way, Hulkamania probably would never have blown up as big as it did if it wasn't for Sylvester Stallone casting Hulk Hogan in Rocky Three as Thunderlips, by the way. Thunderlips, so, yeah, brother. Yeah, Hulkamania was bubbling a little bit, but it got fully, fully over after Hogan's appearance as Thunderlips. Yeah. yeah, so anyway, uh, thank you so much, Sly. Let's get into the last story of the episode, man. Okay, let's do it. All right. Teen given $500 check after turning in $135,000 in cash he found in Albuquerque, New Mexico. What was he given? $500. Kid, keep the money. I, I told people this on the couch story. This is why you don't be the hero. The world doesn't take care of its heroes, okay? I hate to say it. It's not a movie. Heroes are not taken care of. This kid... Turned in all that money and got five hundred dollars for doing it. He would have had one hundred thirty-five thousand if he hadn't done that. So that's so, crazy. Jose Ramirez or Ramones or Ramirez or whatever his name is. He's this kid goes to this ATM in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Looks down right by the ATM, sees a bag with one hundred and thirty-five thousand dollars in it, uh, and then he he actually called uh, you know the authorities or whatever and turned it in. My first thought, so he's in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and he finds $135,000. Yeah. 
Well, I would have was... thought I would have thought that Jesse from Breaking Bad left it as a kid. yeah, bitch. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> what it was is uh, he didn't see the swarm of bees. They actually brought the money there to meet their coke dealer. You know the they <laughs> that's that's called a callback. They would have uh, needed the entire fucking hive to carry that much cash. That's uh, what I'm talking about. They carried it. The whole hive did to get yeah. their coat. So get that guy coke. fucked over. Um, speaking of uh, Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad, uh, there's a new teaser out where you hear this uh, a repeat from a Better Call Saul episode of season four where this guy found him in uh, at the Cinnabon, in, you know, the present day, as, in his secret identity as Gene. Yeah. And he's like, come on, man, say say it. Just say it. I know who you are. You know who you are. Say it. And they did this teaser, and it's it sounds like maybe Mike and then Walt, and then it's plain as day in the teaser. You hear, come on, man, say it. And it's Aaron Paul. It's Jesse. Uh, so we're, the last six episodes of Better Call Saul are dropping, uh, like in a week. Uh, they're going to start coming out. And uh, Jesse and Walt will be in at least an episode or two of those. Oh, so man. That's going to be fun. Sign me up, dude. Uh, and, hey, if those bees were heading to get drugs in Albuquerque, they were <laughs> definitely getting blue meth from Heisenberg. They weren't doing coke. They were getting the meth. They were getting Listen, the good stuff. And when, when they get it, they're going to go eat some Los Polos Hermanos. Um, <laughs> um, I, so, also, hey, so to wrap this little story up, um, so he ended up getting the $500 check from a electric company called PN, <laughs> PNM electric company. So he didn't even get the money from the ATM company. He got it from the New Mexico electric company who like probably wanted some publicity like, Hey, you know, we rewarded this kid. Then El Patron, which I think is the tequila company gave this kid a gift card and $500 cash. So he ended up getting like a thousand bucks actually. And then ESPN radio uh, gave him New Mexico college football season tickets, which, whatever. They so, suck. Whatever. <laughs> but, which you know, sold for another $500. No. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so he's got $1,500 now, <laughs> as opposed to 135 k and a freaking whole batch of blue meth. There you go. Gosh, great episode, man. Episode. We're done, dude. We're done for for tonight. 80stees.com, everybody. Watch out for uh, coked-out bees and nuclear grizzlies, folks. Uh, This has been Josh LaRue saying thanks for watching. Be excellent to each other. Good night, and have a pleasant tomorrow. Say good night, Alex. Good night, Alex. Mahalo, dog.